as we continue. Thank you very much. And now let's continue uh, standing and have our prayers. And I hope it's prayers, not a speech. Let's start with uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Asante. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanur rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of the Almighty, the cherished and sustainer of the universe, the compassionate, the merciful, the one who all controls the absolute control of our lives, who has no beginning, he has no end. We turn to you in repentance, O oh Allah. Sometimes you go against your will. Allah forgive us and put us among the righteous servants of yours. If you don't forgive us, we shall be among the losers. Oh Allah, we turn to you to thank you for the gift of His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Mseveni and Imama Janet Kataha Mseveni for the good thing they have done for us in this country. Bless them. Bless the family and bless all Ugandans. Oh Allah, we want to thank you for the gift of the ministers, the members of parliament, the cultural leaders, the religious leaders, and want to thank you for the good environment that you have given us today. Want to thank you for Tororo Cement Industry, for all that they have done for the people of Uganda. Bless them. Bless the workers. May you inculcate the love for work in the workers. May they work hard and also deliver. We pray for the leaders and the management to be fair to the workers. Allah, we want to thank you for the gift of life. We pray for the journey masses, for all the people who are here. Bless each and everybody. We say this in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's have Reverend uh, retired Dr. Nicodemus Okile. Your Excellency, we say thank you for your coming. And uh, I would like also to say thank you for you pronounce yourself on the matter of Dororo and West Brahma on the map that they went for, in, they went to collect from England. We say thank you for that pronouncement. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord of all, the creator and the preserver of all that is, we return great thanks to you for ordaining men to work and to do and correct your creation, for man's invention and subduing and having creation under his submission. Thank you for this day that you have come to inaugurate this plant and that that plant will give the Ugandans employment. We equally say thank you to you, O oh Lord God, the eternal God. Your greatness is beyond our understanding and your generosity beyond our deserving. For this sovereign nation, Uganda, we say thank you. That was rescued from pieces to one piece now. 
and that your servant, General Kaguta Museveni, our president, rescued us. Not only us, our lives and our properties. We say thank you, O oh Lord. Give and grant him and his family long live. May you, may you shine your face upon him and clear all the darkness that the evil one might want to lay upon him. May you, O oh Lord, grant him peace, even peace which the world cannot give. And the blessing of God the Father Almighty, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and be with us, with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, you can have your seats now. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, President Chori Kapton Seveni, and Mama. Uh, protocol, uh, too many names. Uh, I can't mention everybody, but I'll creatively uh, introduce uh, most of you because there are too many and uh, there are so many functions happening. Uh, so, Chairman Patel and the management of Doro Cement, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Uh, for those of you that see me on TV, soft copy, this is the hard copy. As a matter of introduction, my name is J.K. Kazora, and I'm glad to be in Tororo. I haven't been here in almost a decade. Uh, when the MD Garani invited me, and he said, you have to come and MC on merit. Uh, I told him, okay. And he said, the president was going to be the chief guest. I laughed. And he told me, J.K., why are you laughing? I said, you know, I've been an MC 22 years. And six times they've invited me to be an MC, and the president was supposed to be the chief guest. He never showed, and he's so busy, so I don't know if he's going to show this time. So for the first time in 22 years, I've been blessed to MC with the president here, and a double blessing with Mama. So, Bugaro, for me, a successful career now. <laughs> so today we are celebrating Toro Cement. Just to give you a brief background, it's been around for 71 years now. In 1994-95, the government decided to privatize the organizations that were not, not doing well, profitability and all that. So people bidded, and Chairman Patel, they got this franchise. Since then, they've invested till today close to one trillion, that's 720 billion shillings have been invested in this plant, including what they're launching today. So a round of applause for the management. And for that, every single year, they gross 1.3 trillion shillings, 1.3, paying taxes of 208 billion shillings every year. The Minister of Finance is here, economy, so. And also, oh, I've not even mentioned the 5 billion they pay monthly to Umeme. Now, when you talk about employment, this organization, and believe me, I say this with authority because I work with most of these organizations. Umeme, we have 1,100. Pepsi Cola, we have 952. Centenary Bank, close to 1,000. Here, directly on a payroll, 1,500 employees. 1,000 during the day, 500 at night. Now, Toro Cement does not own a single truck. Last night, there was a traffic jam of trucks here, about 300 of them. That's 600 drivers. And those are just picking cement. There are those trucks, another 300, that bring the raw materials. That's another 600 drivers. They have to eat, they have to drink, and also other things, the population has to grow. So, moving on from transporters, we have the hardware worlds of this world. I'm seeing Simon here. The, the distributors. So Tororo Cement as an organization employs per month close to 8,000 Ugandans. This factory employs about 200 women from here that do the cleaning, setting up, the gardening. There are chefs here. There's a young man here called Babu, owns a company that does that, the painting. So in terms of employment in Uganda, Tororo Cement comes number one. Now, we don't have much time, we have very few speeches, but uh, as an MC, you, you're always uh, privileged to, to invite the president 
Because you know there's protocol. I see there's uh, Honorable uh, Anita here. I cannot introduce the president. Say, are you a young man? I see Honorable Bahati. Now I'm creatively mentioning your names. I see, <laughs> I see Honorable Oboth. I see the area MP as well is here. So it's say, ah, you man, you cannot invite the president to speak. The big people are here, but today I am honored for the very first time in my 22 years career, I get in invite the president to speak. And uh, usually they do it in a nice corporate way. For me, I'm going to do it our way. So I'm inviting the president to speak now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming the president of the ghetto, the ambassador of the youth, voice of the money, the best of East Africa, the frontline commander, the ATM machine, the original copy, brother from another mother, the King Kong of the King Kong, yes, it's the King Kong, Timba Cobra, Atageja Atagoka, the hero of the hero, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of Uganda. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulate you, especially to Cement, for, for, for this tremendous achievement of making, you, making sure that the economy of Uganda prospers. <laughs> so you should care for yourselves. The Indian community and the Uganda, we are the same people. Yeah? <laughs> this is because during those days of Amini, Amini, just Indians away, said 90 days. Oh. <laughs> yeah? How do you just away wealth creators? So when the Nairam government took over power, one of the major targets, I told God, I told God that now, give me vision so that I return all the Indians back. So now you are here, you are enjoying peace. <laughs> I thank you for your social and economic contribution especially in terms of uh, developing our economy. But all that would not have been achieved if there was no peace. That's why now you are peaceful people, sitting comfortable. But those days you were in Dukha, 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 Dukha. <laughs> eh? So my role as Mzai Owech Kofira is to make sure that no one disrupt peace in Uganda. Yeah? I therefore, you know, I was telling my, 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 my son Manish, my Muzukuru, that I have I love Indians personally. I love the, the, the Indian music. I normally use it during exercises. Because there's this one of, eh? I also watch Indian movies. But the problem, Indian movies are, are so fictional. Yeah? How can you use one rug and you cook the whole village? <laughs> yeah? But I call upon all investors to come and invest in Uganda, not only in economics, but also in culture and in education. Where's my son? Where's Manish? Manish, come, 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 come. You can grow for my, my Muzukuru. <laughs> my, my, my Muzukuru is the only, is the only Muyinde we invited at our 50th wedding anniversary in Tumamu. <laughs> so when he told me, he said, but, 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 but you should come here now. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, because he's his son. So we are very grateful for you. And as I finish, I want to make sure that in every district there is Manish. 
With that, I'm very optimistic that Uganda's future is going to be very bright. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. A round of applause for Mendo for a wonderful performance. And that's why our president is such a fantastic man. I don't think there's any other president, you know, maybe Trump, where someone can imitate the president. And every time Mendo is here, the president is always dying and, you know, he gets hackies and is uh, excited. <laughs> Uh, like I told you we don't have so much time because the president and mama have uh, so, many, so many other engagements. And right now, please, honestly, let's all stand up and put our hands together for the chairman that has made this happen. Toro Cement contributes 60% of the cement in Uganda, market share. So some of you don't know market share, it's more like when you see 10 buildings, six of them have been built by Toro Cement. The four is uh, other companies. So ladies and gentlemen, please also welcome the chairman of uh, Toro uh, TC, uh, Mr. Patel. One more time, one more time, round of applause. Your Excellency, the First Lady, distinguished ambassadors from Italy and India, MPs, local leaders, local religious leaders. It's been an honor, and with tears in my eyes, I say, Thank you very, very, very much for attending this function. In fact, I was thrown out yesterday from my own factory because they did not know me. <laughs> this is my first visit after 13 years to Tororo. And honestly, we have a team here which is dedicated and working very, very humbly and blissfully because they are all God-fearing like you all. <laughs> My Excellency, they say Uganda is the pearl of Africa. My First Lady, you are the pearl. <laughs> and they say the bird is the crown bird of Uganda. Your Excellency, you are wearing the crown now. And let me be very frank and short, because really we have got a lot of assignments today and engagements. Tororo started 28 years ago by my late father, my late uncle, my late brother. All of them passed on in God's hands due to some complications in our family DNA or whatever but we did not forget God and always I ask my dear dear customers that do not forget God they are our basis and I have to say dear customer otherwise they won't pay me so honestly we as an institution, we just installed a $25 million VRM, which is the most sophisticated meal in East and Central Africa, which has got German technology, and it is producing 150 tons of clinker grinding per hour. By March, with God's grace and God in front with us, we will have installed a 300 ton per hour a clinker grind vertical roller grinding mill. In total, by March, we'll be grinding capacity of five 
million tons per year. The sky is the limit. We are right now doing a thousand tons using Tororo stone and all that stone you see there is from Moroto. We are blending that to make Linka. And with God's grace, within the next five years, we'll have a 5,000 ton plant in Moroto, Uganda, which will be producing in Klinka. So we'll not have to import a single truck from Kenya or any other country. It's with your blessings and your prayers, we are what we are. We run the largest disabled school in Africa, in Kenya. We have an employment bureau where we take street kids to Qatar. We have managed to take 1,000 after rehabilitating them. We give out 2 million liters of fresh water to all the slums in the coastal area. We also have done a policy where we have to spend $3 million per month into charity. We are feeding 40,000 people. It's a humble request. We, for 25 years, as I pledged that I will, we have been here for 28, but we started operating 25 years. I pledged $25 million to all unfinished projects like churches, schools, mosques, or whatever. And I'm proud to say we have completed 80% of them. And seeing both of you together after 13 years, I speak from my heart. I will double it so that you have celebrated 50 years of your wedding, so I will put another $25 million and $25 million worth of 25 projects. And God bless you, and God bless Uganda. Uganda is a land of plenty. Us Indians, wherever we are, we have the color of our blood, which is same. That is red. And peace is priceless. If it was not from Zez for love, unity, and peace, we would have not accomplished all this. So our prayers go to our leaders. And if it was not for our leaders, we would have been misled. And right now, what we are here, we first have to appreciate God. He is the one who is guiding us. If it is not for God, we would not be here. Today, I'm here praying that all of you should put God in front, then we should go. This MCA here is not a religious man because he was talking of the drivers, so better get hold of the Bible. <laughs> but I would like to thank you all, Your Excellency. Mama, tuko pamoja. Na tutakuwa pamoja ata ikiwe wapi. That is our prayers. We wish all of you, all of you once again, I bow down and say thank you very, very much. One more time, a round of applause for Chairman. Chairman, I believe in God. I am very, I got saved in 1989. Chairman, I'm an orphan. My father died in the war. My mother, do you need any kids? I am also an orphan like them. Please take me along. Don't give me 25 million, just give me one. <laughs> <laughs> eh, but you people. 1.3 trillion shillings every year here. And the chairman has never come. Imagine a Ugandan owning this company would be sleeping there. So, legacy, legacy, legacy. Uh, unfortunately, I have, I'm not yet uh, a minister, but I can assure you, 2026, I am going to be an MP, and one day, I'll have the power to introduce the president. Uh, okay, so now, I, there are so many ministers, I see Honorable both, I see Honorable Bharti, I see Honorable... But let's now, because we pay, we are among the top payers uh, in the tax, I'll invite uh, the Minister of Finance, uh, Honorable uh, Kasaija, to come and invite Mama, and Mama will invite the President. Thank you very much.
Your Excellency, Mr. President, the First Lady, and the Minister of Education and Sports, my colleague ministers, the entrepreneur of this enterprise and the, all those people you're working with, ladies and gentlemen, before I call the First Lady, Sir, I thought I should give you some little information which I've gathered here. First of all, you, as you have heard, this enterprise has created 1,500 jobs, direct jobs, and 5,000 5, indirect jobs. Two, I've also been asked to to bring something to you, there is a need of an industrial park in Tororo, and uh, the issues now land, but they have said Busetima University has got land which could be passioned up to get to make an industrial park. As you know, that also we can go across there, Dong Song, they also can afford 500 acres where we, and that industrial park would be created. I'm also told that uh, Lord Popat, who was born here, as you know very well, is wishing to come and invest in those, uh, industrial, in that, in that, those industrial parks which we shall have established to the full. Lastly, sir, I wish, I wish to thank you. I don't know whether you still remember when you appointed me Minister for Finance. I came to Entebbe and I said, what do you want me to do? You said, industrialization. Now I wish to thank uh, the owners of this industry who now have joined our crusade of industrializing Uganda. With these few words, because I don't want to preempt it, what the First Lady may say, it's now my pleasure, Mama, to invite His Excellency the President so that the President can address us. Thank you. Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, the Cabinet Ministers present here, Your Excellency, Ambassadors and uh, members of Diplomatic Corps, members the Chairman Tororo Cement, my son, Anish, all of you God's people gathered here today, good afternoon. I want to congratulate the chairman of Tororo Cement and also my son Manish, all the staff of Tororo Cement and indeed the people of Tororo on this beautiful occasion of the commissioning of new Tororo Cement Vertical Rolling Mill Plant. This is a significant contribution to the economic development of our people and the nation. And I thank you for laying your brick on our homeland. Thank you so much. Earlier this year, I received a message from the chairman of Tororo Cement reminding me of a pledge he had made to rehabilitate a number of schools and churches 
of my choice. And I subsequently met the young man I call my son, Anish, who moved swiftly and as we speak now, they are doing a lot of good work all across this country. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to thank Toruro Cement in a special way for remembering to give back to our community. And I pray that God blesses you, that we may be a blessing. Because when God blesses people, it is so that they can be a blessing to others. We are God's feet. We are his hands, and therefore when we do not do what he expects us to do, many problems remain unsolved in our communities. So I thank you for the work you do that is making a difference in this country. Your efforts provide key products used in every building and undeniably the foundation of every structure has cement as significant con construction material. So, since I was asked to just pray and bless this factory, so I want to do. And so I want to ask you to just let us pray now. Heavenly Father, we stand here to give you thanks for this company, Tororo Cement Factory. We bless you for this milestone. Surely it is your wisdom, your grace and blessing that has enabled them to do all that they have done in this country, to give you all the honor and glory. Your word tells us in Psalms 127 verse 1, that unless you build a house, those who build it labor in vain. We thank you now for the leaders of this company who acknowledge your sovereignty and power in all that they do. That is why among the many things they have done, they chose to build houses of prayer for you, and they are continuing to do this in several other places in our country and other countries in the world. When King David chose to build a house for you, you blessed him immensely. You told him that since he desired to build a house for you, you will build for him an eternal house. Indeed, you built for him an eternal dynasty, which includes our Lord Jesus Christ, whose church, Tororo Cement, has built. We therefore invoke that blessing that you give those who support and promote your kingdom. May that blessing rest upon Tororo Cement today and always. We pray for more capital production, a bigger market, favor, grace, and prosperity upon Tororo Cement. Lord, may the joy and happiness that this company has brought to the people in this area and in many other places be multiplied back to them. Lord, bless St. Mark's Church of Uganda, Chaworo and St. Joseph's Catholic Church, Miranda, that they have built in this area. Raise leaders in these churches who have a genuine fear of God. Let them shepherd your people to greatness. May the gospel that is preached on the, on, their par, on the pulpits create a deep change of hearts and effect a holistic transformation in this whole region. Thank you, Lord, for the work they have done. At Siwa Primary School, we ask that the children that are educated in this school will be a great blessing to their parents and our nation. Above all, Lord, we ask that you reveal yourself to the leadership of Tororo Cement in a special way. 
You sent an angel to your servant Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 to tell him that his giving had risen heaven as a memorial before God. May the generous giving of Tororo Cement Factory raise a memorial before you. Let that memorial be a reminder and a channel through which you will constantly bless and expand this factory. Now, Lord, we commend this new Tororo Cement vertical rolling plant into your mighty hands and pray for proper maintenance and productivity, which will transform the cement industry in our nation and the entire region. In Jesus' name, we stand here today and we pray. Amen. Thank you. And please sit down. The Honorable Ministers, Mr. Patel of Cement Works, their highnesses, the cultural leaders, members of parliament, and the workers and other leaders here, and Wanaichi. Right from the beginning, even when we were still in the student movement in the 1960s, we told uh, Ugandans that political leadership is like med medical work. Please don't try to go into leadership if you don't have a medical analysis of your society. Like a doctor looks at a patient and says, looking at the symptoms and so on, he does a diagnosis and says, I think this person is suffering from malaria. And when he does that, then he makes a prescription that since it is malaria, the answer is this and that and that and that. If he gets a wrong diagnosis, <laughs> the patient will die. And this is what has been happening not only in Africa, but in many parts of the world. Leaders don't care to analyze the people they want to lead. And that's how you get all these catastrophes. In our analysis, which we put in our 10 points program, and later on we abridged the 10 points to four uh, principles, we were able to point out to, you, to Ugandans that your problem is that you have missed the bus of history. And Africa has missed the bus of, uh, the bus of history. When the bus of history was moving, Africa stayed on the stage and it left them. This is because the world has been moving for the last 600 years. Otherwise, in the past, Africa was like the rest, like other parts of, of like for instance, Europe. We had art, artisanship, blacksmith, carpenters, what, ceramics. And we had chiefs, the traditional leaders like these ones here.
envy. Instead of having the, the three groups, the rulers, the farmers, and the artisans only, they added new, new groups. By the time of the French Revolution in 1789, there were four classes in society in Europe. You had the feudalists, the rulers like these ones here, but you had a new group called the, the middle class, what they called the bourgeoisie in Europe. And these were people. And then you had a, a new group which never existed in human history. These are the factory workers who are called the proletariat in, in, in Europe. And then you still had the farmers. So you had four classes now. But if you go to Europe now, you will not find the, the, the peasants are no longer there, and the feudalists are no longer there. What you have are now two groups in Europe. You have the middle class and the skilled working class. And this is what we told you. You said, you, you people, if you want to catch up with history, you have to do in a short time what Europe did in about 500 years. And we said, we told you, and we put it in writing in all the documents that there are four sectors where you can do this. Sector number one, agriculture. Stop working you, the Bakedi, you have got a tribe here who distort Runyankore, but I like the way they distort it. These are called Bagwere. Bagwere, they speak Runyankore in a distorted way, but I can hear everything. They say, Okora Echida Kionka working only for the stomach. We told you, with agriculture, stop working for the stomach only. Work for the stomach, but also for the pocket. Everybody. And do so with the chibaro. In Ateso, they call it Aymar. Aymar. So this is number one. Number two, the second sector are the factories, industries, like this one here. Processing what is produced by agriculture, processing minerals, processing forest products, processing what is in the lake, in the fresh water bodies like majangi, the fish. This is the second sector. The third And then the fourth one, ICT. This is what we advise you. In writing, not just talking, everything we say, we write. And put it in the manifesto. Especially the manifesto of 19, uh, 1996, those first gen general elections we had. We pointed out all this. 
Therefore, uh, and we, did, we said this one here, we don't care who does it, whether he's a Ugandan or non-Ugandan, as long as he, especially for industries and services, if he can put his business here, we welcome him and support him. And that's why we had to go against people like Idi Amin, who, who were just ignorant and had chased these Indians. Why chase the, the Indians? The Indians were doing more work, better work than many of the indigenous I, 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 Ugandans. You have heard what this factory is, is doing. Jobs, 1,500, direct, indirect, 8,000. Uh, co contribution to economy, 1.3 trillion. You heard what the other mass of cinema was saying. Taxes, 250 billion. You know? Because this factory now, although it is owned by an Indian from Kenya, is now part of our GDP. Therefore, you Ugandans, you should stop saying No, this is not a Windy's factory. If Emor Mor there goes to India and builds a factory there, that factory will not be a Tesla factory. It will be a factor of India. So these factories here are Ugandan factories by who, who, regardless of who has built the factory. That's what GDP means. GDP is different from GNP, Gross National Product. That's the one which traces wealth owned by citizens. But all these powerful countries in the world are powerful first and foremost because of bigger GDP. If you go to the United States and you say the GDP of the United States is now 25 trillion, much of that GDP is owned by Japanese, India, uh, Arabs, and so on. But it gives the power to the USA not to the countries of the origins of the investors. Because this tax money, is it going to India or is it coming to us? So please be clear and stop of Kafiri. Bob Tarengera. Now, Bob Kafiri. So, the second sector that will make us catch up with the rest of the world is industry. And I'm very glad that Mr. Patel came here and we we privatized the other government factory, and now he has, he has expanded it. Because I remember that time, the production of cement by the government factories, this one here, and the one of Hima, I think it was like less than one million or something like that, one million tons. But you hear, he's saying now that this one alone will produce five million tons a year. So you can see the correctness of, of our diagnosis, where we said in order to catch up 
with the bus of history. We need to modernize agriculture, industrialize, expand services, and ICT. So I want to thank Mr. Patel and his group for their contribution. And they are, they are going to build cement, you mix a number of things, including what they call clinka, which is the, 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 the primary raw material, which is limestone, which is already partially processed. Now, apparently, they are no longer using this limestone over here of Tororo because it has got magnesium in it. And magnesium makes cement which takes lo long to, to concretize, to, to become hard. That's why when you, when, when you are using the old cement, you would put it there and leave it time to to, to to consolidate which would, which, which, which would take time for the constructor that's why they are not using it so much that's why they are using the one of Moroto which settles which Enuera Mangu it concretizes quickly. So they are going to build another factory in Moroto, in Katkekire, to do clinker there. The other day I was there in Moroto laying foundation stone for a Chinese one, which will use the limestone from Rupa, Rupa North north of Mount Moroto. Katkekere is south. So as I told Patel, we are going to, 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 to take electricity from where it is now in Moroto to, to Katkekere. That's not a problem. And we shall give you the mining rights for limestone in the 10,000 acres you want. We shall give it to you. That's not a problem. So therefore, my appeal to Ugandans, especially the politicians and the public servants, and also the public, is to understand the role of industrialization, but also understand the role of investors. Don't waste their time. They will do a lot of good for you if you welcome them and you support them, as you have seen here. Don't waste their time. Wasting their time, Bukafiri. Uchwana mutu anacherewesha watu inye anataka kuleta pesa hapa, anataka kuleta miradi hapa. Unajua kwamba huyu ni Bukafiri. Angari and Bari. Support them so that they move quickly, 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 because we have nothing to lose but everything to gain. This factory is here. It is not in India, it is not in Kenya, it is here. It is employing our people here. It is using our electricity. It is using our water. Everything, every, every advantage, even if he makes a profit and takes it away, it will be only about 10% of the value of, of the earnings. Now, that's where now I come to the Wakedi now. The Wakedi, we advised all Ugandans in 1996, 1995, I, I toured the whole Uganda and I said, 
I have already done some experiment in my area there near where I come from, North Ankore. And I have seen that you can all get out of poverty through agriculture if you do so with the Chibaro. And I told you that because many of the families have already fragmented land, don't just do agriculture aimlessly without a Chibaro. And I said, if you have got four acres, that's when I advised you on the four acres plan. One acre, plant coffee. Second acre, plant fruits, mangoes, oranges, pineapples. Third acre, put pasture for zero grazing cows. Fourth acre, you put food, food, muhogo, whatever. If you are near a swamp, do fish farming. Meanwhile, in the backyard, you put poultry for eggs and also those who are not Muslims or traditional of Anyankore, you put pigs. That's what we advised you. But Ugandans don't listen. <laughs> they just, many of them are determined to remain in poverty. Like when I was coming, I was looking through the window of the, of the helicopter. What are these people? They, you have, they have cultivated. The market have cultivated. But they have cultivated without a chibaro. Because I see half an acre of maize. Maize, to get money from maize, you need about 100 acres. Because you can calculate how much money would you earn from one acre of maize in a year. You can calculate the chibaro. When we calculated, it was not much money. That's why I was discouraging the bucket in Parisa from growing cotton. Because I said cotton, cotton is a good crop. We need it for textiles. But it can only be done by people with, with more land. So I'm going to come back. And really we shall have to, to discuss this issue. Because I was looking some small maize, uh, I think also some little mohogo. I don't have, I have not seen the chibaro well in the gardens. And these workers who are here would be eating your food if you are, for instance, doing milk, milk, zero grazing cows. They will be buying your milk and fruits. They will be buying your fruits. So I think here there is a disconnection in some of the areas. In some of the areas, people have woken up, like in the cattle corridor there, people are producing a lot of milk, and you can see they have improved their livelihood. In Masaka, they are growing the coffee, in Karangara, they are growing palm palm oil. In Bundubijo, they are growing cocoa and uh, other things. In some of the areas, they have woken up. In, in Teso, the other Teso, they had started citrus farming. Those are the type of enterprises that have got Ichibaro. But I'm coming back to discuss this matter with you in detail. Meanwhile, like for instance, there's a place called Limoto, Limoto where I, I made some experiment. This is in the Paris area, where I made experiment of persuading 
the market there, moving from the swamp, the center of the swamp to the, to the edge of the swamp, so that the swamp comes back. Then at the edge, they make fish ponds, and they were earning much more money from the fish ponds than they were earning from the rice in the center of the, of the, of the swamp. And that restored water in the area, and we are using that water now to irrigate the other part of the land which is not in the swamp, because we need irrig irrigation. We need to shift from rain agriculture to irrigation agriculture. So where will the water come from? If people have dried the swamps with the rice, then where shall we get water to irrigate the other land which is not in the swamp? So I'm coming back so that we, we really discuss this in detail and we move together. You have seen what the factories can do, but I can tell you, like if you do what I'm telling you, we shall even have more factories. Like I built a small factory in, in Soroti for fruit processing. But there's so much fruit there, the small factory is not enough. We need more factories there. So you can see if our people here grow the fruits, we shall have factories for cement, factories for uh, fertilizer. You know the other factory of, uh, of Sukuru Hills? Uh, Ugandans took, some Ugandan officials took bribes from the Kachaina there, that Kachaina man. A Kachaina culture, Kachaina <laughs> But the command is coming back. He was in problems. He was in problems. He was in problems. Why didn't you tell me I would have arrested them? Do you have proof? Oh, oh, oh. But he's coming back now. We're trying to help him to come back. So that huge factory is also there, the one of phosphate fertilizers, and all other things that were going to be there. So the idea of the industrial park is a very good one. That big land of, uh, because you, you know that land of Sukuru was part of the, of, 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 of Iatro, Iatro. The East African recite something, Tripotonomiasis. It's a government land. So we can get a part of it and make it an industrial park. There's no problem. About Busitema, mm -mm. I wonder what that was to the care of us for me. Busitema, that one is, that one I need to be convinced. But the other one has no problem. So I want to thank, finally, I didn't know that Indians were godly people. But I'm very much impressed that these Indians are actually godly people.
in their in their religion of Hindi Hindi Hinduism and what much of the what you can hear what they are doing they do a lot of what they call social co social corporate responsibility but you call a business some of them do it because of business strategy but these ones do it because of 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 of, of god's commandment more or less like what mama was saying because mama was saying that Daudi built the church for god that's why that's how god blessed him now these ones also say the same say you start with god then you come later so I'm, I'm very happy with, with, with that. I didn't know. I thought the Indians were mad when they burned dead bodies when was such a Balaru. But it seems they are very, very close with, 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 with God. So I thank them also for that philanthropic work they are doing. The churches, the what, the what, that, I, I thank them for that. Although for me, in Zenduku business, when Tandikira, believe in Rabbi Yongerako, for me, Mimi Nuku was saying we are Biashara. Come on, Gazia, Mamba Yamsada, Bas, Yuni Mamba Yen. Yokwangu, Nibiashara Kwanza. So, the market, I'm coming back about the Chibaro in agriculture. These, these, these small pieces of family lands, which I see, they are small, but they can be used in a very good way. Because we have got some families near Fort Porto using one acre, only one acre, for zero grazing cows and for poultry. And you find a man is earning 240 million shillings a year. This is what I want to see here in the bouquet. I'm coming back for, for, that, for that conference, zonal conference. Mungu Awabariki. One more time, put your hands together for our fantastic, brilliant leader. He's taken us 600 years back, brought us to the French Revolution 1779, brought us to agriculture, brought us to uh, so many things. Uh, but I'm truly disappointed after 22 years as an MC, the president doesn't know my name. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Jackie Kazora. I am the son of Major John Kazora. Chairman Patel, I'm not an orphan. Please, you can take your seat. <laughs> Chairman, instead of one million, you can give me now 500. So now we're moving on, and uh, the final part is uh, some pictures. So we have uh, three groups, and as we do that, we are going to also now recognize everybody. So Salvador, uh, yeah, his name is Salvador, Idi Amin is his cousin. <laughs> Mr. President and Mama, we request you for a few of your minutes, as we request uh, Ambassador of Barat and the wife, Ambassador of Italy, Mr. Kartan Patel, to please join uh, the president and mama for a picture moment then closely i uh, will request this next group because of time please let's do this real quick mr and mrs bm gagrani to also join uh, after the first session uh, mr bt shash to also join uh, mrs vaishali patel mr vishal patel mr omido and mr dipak shengani so after the first group has taken pictures, and that is the ambassador of Barat and the wife, ambassador of Italy, and, and uh, Mr. Kital Patel, we will follow with the next group. We would like to recognize the presence of uh, Honorable General David Mohozi, Minister of Internal Affairs, Honorable Oboth, Oboth, State Minister for Defense, Honorable uh, Vincent Sempija, Minister for Defense and Veteran Affairs, uh, Honorable uh, James uh, Ikuya, Minister of uh, State for East African Affairs, uh, Finance Minister, I've already seen him. Uh, Honorable, you want to introduce Honorable uh, Evelyn Anite, thank you so much for coming. The Minister of State for Finance in charge of investment and privatization. 
Honorable Helen Asvao. Uh, also, we have MPs, uh, starting off with the area MP, Honorable Frederick Angura. <laughs> Honorable Aseku Richard, uh, Honorable Uma. <laughs> okay. After that, we request uh, Mr. and Mrs. B.M. Gagrani, Mr. B.T. Shash. We request just the Ambassador of Barat and the wife, Ambassador of Italy, and Mr. Katan Patel to remain for that photo moment. And then also we ask Mr. Hitesh Patel, Mr. Narupur Bahai, Mr. Sayani, Mr. Fazil, Mr. Mavij Vasani, and Mr. Jitu to also go and have that photo moment. The final group, Your Excellency, as uh, please, uh, we request you. We take this opportunity to thank Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and Mama Janet Kataha Museveni. Thank you so much. Uh, we have been told that the MCs also take a picture. Yes, it is very important. Mr. DJ.